man first discovered that he could, by the simple expedient of putting one foot in front of the other, move from here to there, he has forever sought ways to reach his destination in the shortest time possible. And with the idea of getting somewhere in a hurry, the Pony Express rider ushered in a new era of transportation. This fellow rode hundreds of miles, swam rivers and fought Indians, just so the folks out west could get a letter from Aunt Minnie. The old Conestogas, commonly known as the covered wagons, were the trailers of yesterday. A hitchhiker. Well, maybe times haven't changed so much after all. Prairie schooner transportation was used to pioneer the west, and the deep ruts made by the heavy iron-rimmed wheels can still be seen across the prairies and the mountains and the desert. The overland stage carried paying passengers and express. And would you believe it, the father of the American stagecoach is this sissy-looking affair, a coach and four, no less, used on the continent long before the Indians ever saw their first pale face. We might call this buggy with the cabbie one of New York's first taxis. And of course, the junk wagon came along as soon as folks began to throw away yesterday's newspaper. Speaking of transportation, you see that little fella on top? He rides around town, takes it easy, while Tony give it a push. But then, as now, a fire is something to get to in a hurry. Now here's something interesting. One of the first sightseeing buses on record. Well, that's very interesting. Now we've seen and heard everything. There's no music in the world more lovely than the merry jingle of old-fashioned sleigh bells and the clear, crisp air of a wintry day. A scene like that brings back memories, huh? The horse-drawn streetcar was, at the time, a miracle of transportation. Here, the first strap hangers met to discuss John L. Sullivan's chances in the big fight. Of course, when they came to a hill, everybody had to get out and push. In the meantime, all went smoothly as long as Dobbin had his head. And this looks like a Broadway first night. Those fancy forerunners of the modern limousine delivering the elite at the door are barouche cabs, no less. What? Autographs? But it being summer, these lovelies came on the open-air streetcar. Well, punch my ticket, Mr. Conductor, if they aren't cute. But when the streets got too crowded, man figured he could get from here to there somewhat quicker if he rode up above the traffic. So the elevateds came into being. Highways of steel that flashed by windows three and four stories above the ground. A monument to man's ingenuity. And then what happened? They weren't satisfied, so they went down under the ground, too. Subways, miles of tunnels, arteries of rolling trains beneath Manhattan. In 1830, this monstrous demon appeared. It nearly scared the cows to death. That fellow who ran ahead is probably going to shoe one off the track now. Here's another old number. Those open-air coaches in the back give a swell view for an excursion. This train came along at the turn of the century. Take a gander at that headlight. It's big enough for the opening of a Hollywood supermarket. And look at the wood pile in the tender car. Bet that fireman did a lot of chopping. Boy, after you got home from a trip like that, you had to comb the cinders out of your hair. A far cry from the old stagecoach days, this is the first fast freight. You're gonna wear that bell out if you're not careful. Well, the engines got bigger and more powerful until this happened. Intricate as the workings of a watch. Powerful as a tornado, a tribute to man's mechanical genius. covered wagons took many months to cross the mountains. But this modern freight train with two engines does the job in a day. And here's the latest thing on rails. Modern as tomorrow. The Streamliner. Here she comes. There she goes. Get 
just a load of this. One of the first gasoline buggies, and they aren't going to a costume party either. Dusters and goggles were what the well-dressed motorists wore in those days. The first one-man top. Hey, he gets in the hard way. Don't these contraptions ever get started? Ah, oh, get a horse, mister. Then and now, a flat tire is still a flat tire. Ah, a bunch of the boys out for a ride. Pardon me, they're going for a beer. Here's a fellow and his girl in a sporty job. Wouldn't it be nice if they could all take a ride? There's no room. Hey, what's this? How do you like that? A rumble seat in front. Maybe the engine's missing. Notice the family entrance in the rear. This fellow looks like he knew his business. Maybe we'll really get going. Already? Okay. They're off. You could have fooled me. Look at them. A veritable maze of traffic on a sunny Sunday afternoon. That one man cop still kills me. And here's what happened three short decades later. Not just on a Sunday afternoon, but any day in the week on Fifth Avenue. Millions of people still trying to get somewhere in a hurry. The Wright brothers came along and found a new way to get from here to there. But it flies, and the imagination of all mankind went soaring on newfound wings. Believe you me, a fellow was pretty brave in those days to sit out in front of those flimsy wings and that sputtering motor. But did we ever imagine that these kites with motors, as they were called in those days, would be used for such purposes as man has this day devised? Watch closely. You're seeing one of the first helicopters. Up it goes, and we mean straight up. Monoplanes of this type were responsible for many famous flying records. Chamberlain, Amelia Earhart, Wiley Post, and others flew ships similar to this one. The old Pony Express rider would have been amazed to see this United States mail plane Tri-motored, all metal, this machine received one of the first air mail contracts. The twin-motored transcontinental ship was a later development. Well, maybe they found out that two motors were enough to carry you from California to New York in less than a single day. But dwarfing all achievements in man's quest to conquer space are the giant clipper ships which fly broad expanses of ocean. Just think of it, you can board one of these flying hotels eat and sleep as comfortably as in your own home and play bridge with your fellow passengers while flying halfway around the world. No longer is distance measured by miles, but by oceans and continents, then and now. Who can tell what future manner or means man will contrive to reach his destination in the least possible time? Thus, man in each new age is a pioneer. Perhaps in some future year, racing through the stratosphere faster than the light of day, man may outrace time itself. What's next? Who can tell?